Wouldn't it be great if they made a space heater for a car camper? Something really small, something that didn't use a whole lot of power, but a little ceramic heater, something this size, tiny, handy. Well, they do. It's made for your to have on your desk to just blow on your upper body or under your desk to keep your legs warm. Puts out 200 watts, but it's just on or off. That doesn't do us a lot of good. So what I did today is I added a thermostat option, which will allow you to set the temperature both for heating, and then if you have something that needs cooling, this will also control uh, something that does cooling too. So in this video today, I'll show you all about this. It's a simple thing to put together and not very expensive, and I'll show you how to do it next. So I'm gonna go over the components of the system. This is a small ceramic heater. It's made by Lasco and it's called My Heat, and it uses 200 watts at 110 volts, and it costs, I paid $23 for it. So very reasonably priced, it's very simple. It's just on or off, you have a 110 plug. So there's, a, there's lots of uh, pluses and a few minuses, and, and one of the minuses is definitely fixable. So the first thing that you'll see is it's 110 volts, and it uses 200 watts, but that would be, that's something you could work around. By adding a thermostat, which I did, it's going to cycle on and off. So how much power it uses is going to depend on what kind of temperature differential from inside to outside, how warm you like to keep it. Keep it. Are you going to run it all night? Are you just going to run it in the middle of the night or in the morning? Things like that. Now, if you want to run it without plugging it into a shore power or if you're at a campground, um, you can certainly get a smaller inverter like this one. This is um, a 751, a 500 would be plenty, and you, you could plug this whole setup into the inverter. But I checked it last night, and I ran it very warm because I just want to see if it could keep it warm. And it got down to 34 degrees, and I ran it at about between 65 and 70 degrees, so I was very comfortable. It, it didn't kick on a lot until getting into morning when it started running a little bit, bit more, but it always cycled back off for quite a while. So I use this little watt meter here that measures 110 volts and it used a 75 amp hours. So that's not going to be practical for a Prius because just with the one battery you're looking at a, a 45 amp hour battery and you'd only want to use 20. So even with my double battery that's not going to work. Um, so what I'm using it for is if, if I have access to an extension cord, 110 extension cord. So if you're going to be at a campground or a friend's house or somewhere where you can get an extension cord out, this is a simple, super simple way of staying very warm. Now, if you've got a small van and you have, let's say, 200 amp hours of battery power, then this could work for you as long as you close off your area to pretty much just be your bed. Um, because it's not going to do the whole van probably very well, just the sleeping area. So that's an option. Now, the other thing is that it runs all the time, and that would use a whole lot of power. And so we had to, I had to come up with an idea for a thermostat. Did a lot of searching for 110-volt thermostats, and what I came up with is this little guy here. And very nice, lots of good features here. It's called, it's from Digiten. And I paid $36 for it. And I really, really like this little unit. This has a lot of different uses. One of the uses that people do use this for is for aquarium systems where you want it to stay a certain range of temperature. So you need, you have something to heat and something to cool to keep the fish at certain temperatures. So that's kind of where this comes from. But they've built this one to handle up to 10 amps at 110 volts. So that's actually enough to handle a small uh, AC unit. You could do this. And the neat thing about that is if you buy the cheap, I did this project, in my Land Rover, I have a small 4 amp residential AC unit and I can just set it, but when it cycles off, the fan stays on. So what this allows is there's a plug for cooling and there's a plug for heating. So the air conditioner, I can plug into here and let and just set the unit to all the way cold and let this turn it on and off and that way even the fan gets turned off so when it's cycled off there's no power usage. I found that there's no, I couldn't find any usage of power when the screen's off and it cycles off pretty quickly so this doesn't use any measurable power and what you have here is the temperature probe plugs into the side and I found the temperature to be very accurate it moves in tenths of degrees so I'll go over the installation it's going to be very important for where you put that so this is a great little solution the 
<laughs> the manual is terrible. I couldn't, I learned got very little information out of the manual. So I just had to mess around with it for a long time and I finally did figure it out and I'll show you how to work with that. So let me show you how this thing connects up. So your first connection is going to be to your shore power and extension cord going into your car and that's gonna power up the meter. And then what you're going to do is take the power to your heater and you're gonna plug it into the heating side. All right, now let's go over a little bit of safety. This, this says it has a shut off if it tilts over. There's no way I would ever trust that. So you're gonna to need to put this somewhere where there's no way it's gonna tilt over during the night, fall over, get knocked over. I have a great place on top of my microwave. It's metal, I can't knock it over with my knee, very stable. Um, I could even Velcro it down if I wanted to, just to be sure. But it's not something you'd ever want to run while you're going down the road if you had the battery ability to do that. Um, so be careful where you mount this. It, it could be potentially a fire hazard. So now that I've got it on, in fact, I've set it to where it cycled on, the red light has come on, and then I would leave this on. And then you can see the heater comes on. Very quiet. Hardly any noise, but it puts out a good bit of heat. Um, the heat measured right here at the front is in the 90 degree range. So the controller, that's the kind of the interesting thing. So what we have here is the uh, PV is the current temperature. So um, present temperature, I don't know. The, the, the letters they use are rather strange. This number and this number are your ranges for the heat that you can set. So that means when it goes down below 74.5, it turns on. When it goes above 76.5, it shuts off. So the same thing over on the air conditioning side. Now all these settings are changeable. One of the first things you'll have, the way you change settings in not clear instructions, is you have to press and hold the set button. Once it clicks, if you punch it again, it changes to the different settings. So first thing is it's going to come in centigrade mode, and you're going to need to get it to Fahrenheit. So you press and hold until it beeps, kind okay, of get in the setting mode. And then if you hit the up or down, you'll get Fahrenheit, you'll get centigrade. Now whenever, you find, whenever you've set a setting, in order for that setting to hold, you have to press and hold the set button again to save it. Okay, now in Fahrenheit. So let's look at the other settings we can change. Let's say right now we want it to not run as hot. So I'm going to hit set. All right, now that's going to be the temperature when it turns off. So I'm going to start moving that down. Okay, so there it's going to shut off at 55. And I'm going to press and hold. And there it's clicked off. Now it's jumped over to cooling mode because of the difference. Now it thinks it needs to cool. But because we don't have everything plugged into cooling, that's not a problem. And then as the temperature drops, it'll kick on. Now you can set the differential. So there's 52, 54, right? There's a three degree differential between when it, when it, comes, on, when it comes on and how long it stays on. You can reduce that. Press and hold the button. All right, that's the cooling differential, three degrees. That's the heating differential, three degrees. You can also set an upper alarm temperature and a lower alarm temperature. And then this is for cooling. This is a compressor delay so that this is saying when it cycles off, it, it will take at least three minutes to cycle on so you don't damage your compressor. And then the last setting is your calibration. And I did find mine was off by about two degrees calibrating it to the thermometer I had. So that's adjustable right there. So once you have everything you want, you gotta make sure that you press and hold so that it holds in the setting. All right, so that's how that works. It's pretty neat. So the next thing is I'll show you how I installed it in my Prius. All right, first step is I'm gonna put my heater approximately where I want it. I found, you know, you can aim it different ways. Um, also, you may end up using a small fan to circulate the air because the heat really does stay towards the roof. But you might aim it towards you or aim it back towards your feet or something like that. But put approximately where you want it. And now I'm going to run the cord underneath the mattress out to oh, under the door, under the mattress over here by this door. Your wire from under the bed and plug it into the heating side of the meter. So next, down the left side here, I have zip tied it to this metal loop here. 
that latches the back of the back seat. So that will keep it from running away. So then it's tucked in between the bed. So here's our meter going down between the mattress. I've placed the plug here. There's a nice, nice space here to put this piece here. Um, I zip tied this up a little bit and then I plugged into my extension cord. So when I connect to shore power, I can just set this in here, give it some slack. And by the way, the water pump system's going great and does not leak. And then I can tuck in the cord here. And that way we can close the door and have our power for the night. One more step, you need to plug in the thermostat wire. And this is very important where you're going to put this. Um, I had it up here, hanging up here, and there's a, a, just a huge temperature difference between the top and bottom. So I decided I want it to be about the level of my face or as close as I could get. So again, back to this metal clip here where I have zip tied that. I'm gonna thread this under and I'm just going to zip tie it to that clip. So now I've tucked the thermostat wire back here and I can raise and pull it up a little bit or lower a little bit. And you wanna make sure it's not touching the side and it's not touching you to get a good reading. And I've been going off this thermometer here, which I really like, an indoor outdoor thermometer. And I um, have kind of got used to this. So what I did as, I, as it stabilized during the night, I went in here and I calibrated this one to that one. And since they're both at the same level, they should be reading the same thing. So I can kind of get a consistency there. So that's the wiring setup. And I love this system. It's so simple. It works great. And it's a great option as long as you have access to 110 and pretty reasonable. So I think you'll enjoy this if you end up setting this up. And I hope you found this helpful. And thank you so much again for watching.